They are building and building and building and expanding into this area and then they say there's going to be a Palestinian state. If you take a plane to Tel Aviv, you will arrive at a modern metropolis. You can take a train and then a bus to Jerusalem. It will take about an hour. No time to stop at the Western Wall. There's another wall which demands your attention. If you take the bus from Damascus Gate, it will lead you through a maze of segregated roads to the checkpoint. Ignore the big red signs, they're just there to terrify you. Pass through the checkpoint, then you will be in Bethlehem, just south of Jerusalem and the Wall, and in between Beit Jala and Beit Sahur. All this land belongs to people of Beit Sahur, but now they set up these uh, security, so-called security fences. By the way, just behind there, if you look, there's another Palestinian area. So this is actually this settlement it's sits between Palestinian areas, Palestinian yeah. town of Beit Sahur, and that Palestinian village called Sabahra. Next comes a drive down a two-way street, smushed into one lane by the wall. Here is a house of a friend of mine, Mary Anastas. The wall comes on all the <laughs> oh three God. sides of her house. We are right here. We're our here. aunt's land is here. They host it. This is our house, surrounded. Wow. This is our uncle's house. And this is my cousin's here. Look, they took his garden. And they mm. make it parking lot. They took her garden, which is over there, on, the, on this side of the wall. We made it the parking lot. And from there, it's just a quick drive down the road to the Palestine Museum of Natural History. And so, if one wants to make a difference in life, this is Mazen Kumsia, the founder of the One museum. One has to think globally and act locally. The word museum often implies stale hallways full of taxidermied animals, but in Palestine, nothing can exist that does not make a political statement. Because ultimately, everything is politics. Uh, even when you do environmental work, it's politics. Environmental situations interconnected to the political situation. For example, we did some articles on the effect of the Israeli industrial settlements on human health and on biodiversity here. So in this article titled Genotoxicity of Recycling Electronic Wastes in Edna, Palestine, the museum documents the effect of e-waste recycling, especially burning of computer parts on chromosomal and DNA damage in Edna, Hebron. Because they put their most polluting industries near Palestinian areas. This study showed the DNA damage and chromosome breaks in humans. And it obviously also impacts other animals and plants in the area. What they did is they went to a town called Idna, which receives hundreds of tons of e-waste every day, most of it through the Tarkumia checkpoint. Here's a picture of an electronic recycling facility next to a school. They collected blood samples from 45 subjects from Idna and then 16 control subjects from Bethlehem and then tested those samples for chromosomal aberrations. Chromosomal aberrations are these macro mutations like rings or deletions or breaks which can cause cell damage and eventually cancer. What they found was that for the e-waste exposed group, the total number of chromosomal aberrations averaged 4.84, but for the control sample, the average was just 0.75. Compared to control sites, there's more DNA damage and chromosome damage. And so they conclude that the significantly increased levels in IGNA thus pretend a true effect of e-waste. This is a particularly stark example of an interconnected environmental and political problem, but in Palestine, anything the museum writes is politicized. Every paper the museum publishes starts with a sentence like, Butterflies were collected in the occupied West Bank, Palestinian territory. So just mention the, pal the Palestinian territory or West Bank or occupied Palestine, this word in your topics or publication. It's like really kind of resistant because you are like, okay, I'm telling the, the universe, we, ha we are still Palestinian, we, we are here, we are not like vanish or something. But just look, and when we first published our first paper about butterfly, they rejected. Why? Because we put Palestine. It's sometimes different. What this means is that a paper about Palestinian butterflies is about much more than butterflies. It's about the right to exist. Of course, we have occupation here, we have colonization, we have ethnic cleansing and racism that's ongoing on a daily basis. Should we wait until we have our freedom to protect our environment? Should we wait until we have our freedom to deal with the, with the catastrophic effect of the colonization on our environment? The answer that I gave and that the people who work with me, the volunteers gave, is no. We say on the wall also, it's written, 
to exist is to resist. And yes, working on the environment is also a form of resistance because when we clean our environment, it increases, for example, the attachment to Palestinian children, to the land, mm. to their environment, to feel hopefulness, to remove any sense of despair that this is going to always continue like this. So when I teach my students, when I give them courses in environmental biology or in biodiversity or in things like that, this is a sense of hopefulness, that there is actually a light at the end of the tunnel of this occupation and colonization. This is Palestine. Every stone is fought over. Every tree matters. Here, a museum doesn't just archive the past, it fights hard for the future. So to exist in Palestine is to resist. To exist here, to love our land, to love our nature, to love birds and animals and plants and flowers, to love the land and, and the landscape. These are all forms of resistance. A mosaic at the entrance to the museum reads, Here we will stay, in Lida, in Romley, in the Galilee, we shall remain like a wall on your chest and in your throat like a shard of glass, a cactus thorn, and in your eyes a sandstorm. Thanks for watching. This video is part of the EVOS seminar series. We are both a university class and a YouTube channel. We host speakers who give live lectures and then we make videos about them. There are links to Dr. Kumsia's full lecture as well as the papers that he mentioned in the description below. You can click subscribe to watch more videos like this one and I will see you next time.